What is going on guys, Castori here, and today we're going to be talking about the Sony ZV-E10. And not only that, we're going to talk about the camera, but also we're going to show you some of the images that have made it to the internet, thanks to Sony Alpha Rumors. We're going to talk about what it seems to be the confirmed specs of this camera, price, some of the things that this camera is going to have, and some of the things that most likely won't have. So, if you have been looking for this camera, stick around, all the information right after the intro. Welcome back to the channel guys, Gaston Ray here. And if you're new to my place, this channel, which is your channel, welcome back or welcome for the first time. I do gear reviews, tutorials behind the scene, and I've been covering a lot of rumors like this one. So if you like all the geeky, nerdy camera stuff, consider subscribing to the channel and enable notifications for more content like this one. So Sony Alpha Rumor have posted this. We're going to be popular in those images in just a moment. And we're going to be talking about all the specs really quick so then we can analyze the images because they tell us a pretty good story of what this camera is going to be about. The first one is going to be the sensor. And like we mentioned before, this camera is not going to have the brand new sensor that we thought this camera was going to have, like maybe a 30 megapixel sensor or even 36. So it's going to have the same 24 megapixel sensor. And it makes sense because most likely Sony is going to reuse a lot of the things that they already have made and probably have in stock to make this camera as affordable as possible. We're going to talk about price in just a moment. Next feature is that this camera is going to come with a, a kit lens, you know, the 16 to 50 millimeter with variable aperture from f3.5 to 5.6. Most likely it's going to be the same as the one that already exists. And if you don't like it lenses, this camera may have a feature that is going to um, allow you to like it a little bit more. We're going to talk about that feature in just a moment. Now, next, let's talk about video codecs, because this camera is going to be out of all the APC cameras for what we have heard and we have read before. One of the ones with the utmost limitation when it comes to codec, because apparently this camera is going to do XAVCS up to 25p. And that means that most likely the camera is going to do 24 and 25 and it ends right there. Now, at first, I thought that maybe I was looking at specs of a you know British camera, European camera. But um, no, uh, seems that this is going to be the case because the other giveaway is that the full HD um, you know slow motion is gonna cap also at 100 frames per second. So you know four times you know the speed of the standard frame rate. And to be honest with you, you know, I guess you know most likely yeah you know some people should actually at 25 or 24 I shoot all my videos at 24. Now let's talk about a feature that is going to be unique for the first time for Sony with an APS-C sensor camera. And this one is going to be the active image stabilization. Not only this camera is going to have sensor image stabilization, but also we're going to have the digital image stabilization that we already have in the Sony ZV-1, Sony a7S III, Sony FX3. Now in the Sony ZV-1, it works okay, but in the Sony a7S III and the Sony FX3 works really, really good. And I actually left my gimbal more than once at home and I've been using the active image stabilization, especially if you're going to be doing slow pannings and things like that. Now, running with a camera or walking with a camera, you're still going to want to use a gimbal. I'm just telling you that. But chances are that this one is going to be somewhere in between the Sony ZV-1 and the full frame camera, such as the Sony a7S III. Now, this camera is going to have the same auto exposure feature with face priority that we have seen in the Sony ZV-1. So for those that don't know, basically the camera is going to prioritize the exposure of your face blowing out the background, you know, whatever it is, just to give your face good in exposure. Another very good feature that I wish it made it to the Sony a7C and it is going to be present in this camera is going to be the product showcase. So, for example, right now, if I want to show you the camera of my phone, see, it's still out of focus, not focusing unless, you know, I block my face because the camera is trying to track my eye and, you know, it's a good feature. But in this camera, you can actually disable that by either configuring a function, a button or anything like that from the menu. And then, you know, tell the camera, hey, listen, every time I put something in front of the lens, just, you know, swap focus through that element. So it's going to be in this camera. It is in the Sony ZV-1. It works really good. Once again, I just wish, you know, Sony may do a firmware update or something to bring it to the Sony a7C. Just like the Sony ZV-1, we also going to have that bokeh 
mode or the instant bokeh, which pretty much what it does, it prioritizes the aperture to its maximum to give you the utmost shallow depth of field. In the Sony ZV-1, you really have to be too close to the lens for that to happen. But this one, remember, it's going to be an APS-C sensor. So chances are that you can have a super decent, you know, background separation, especially if you use a lens such as, you know, the Sigma 60 millimeters f1.4, which is the lens and the camera, the a6600 that I've been using for all the videos from last year and some of the videos from this year. Okay, so this camera is not going to have a dial, as you guys can see, and instead we're going to have a mode button, just like we have it in the Sony ZV-1. So basically you push that button, then you scroll through the menus to select manual for stills, you know, movie or SNQ. And this one is going to be the most important thing that we still don't know much, but chances are that the news are going to be bad because the camera, yes, it's going to have a fully articulating screen. And we have seen that Sony has implemented that on all the brand new cameras. Well, with the exception of the Sony A1. But we're gonna have that flip out screen, but I don't think we're gonna have the touchscreen uh, menus and we're not gonna have the brand new menus neither. I don't think so. So they haven't done it for the Sony a7C, they haven't done it for the Sony ZV-1 and Sony seems to kind of like restore that feature for much more expensive cameras. So it is what it is, guys. What do you think about this topic? Let me know in the comments down below. When it comes to body, as you can see right now, this camera is going to be a little bit smaller than the A6000 and more in line with the A5000 bodies. Now, in my prior video, I have made this comparison. I'm going to post this image right now so you can actually take a look between the Sony ZV-1, the A5000 and the A6600. And as you can see, between the ZV-1 and the A5000, there is not much different when it comes to the footprint. Obviously, the A5000 is a little bit bulkier. But when you compare the ZV-1 and A5000 versus the A6600, you can see the difference in here. So you can think of this camera kind of like a Sony ZV-1 with a mount and maybe a little bit better battery life. So we're going to talk about that in just a moment as well, because the last thing that I want to mention is going to be the price. This camera is going to be priced at $899, or at least this is what Sony Alpha Rumors is stating right now, and $900 for Europe. So to be honest with you, it's not super cheap. And for a lot of people, it's going to be better going with the Sony a6400, you know, because it's a camera that, in my opinion, does better photography and it is a better video camera. You're also going to have, you know, a small EVF because this camera does not have an EVF and you're going to have, you know, better codecs, you know, when it comes to video. Now, you're not going to have image stabilization, but if your camera is going to be on a tripod or you're going to be doing more photography, it seems like the Sony a6400 may be a better bang for the buck. And chances are that Sony may drop the prices of those cameras when this camera actually gets announced. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to review some of the images and kind of like depict what the story tells us here from those images. Now, the first thing that you can see is that this camera, like I mentioned before, is more reminiscent to an A5000 body. Very skinny, not so thick like the um, A7C, for example. And the first thing that actually catches my eye is that this camera seems to have the same three capsule microphone that we can find in the Sony ZV-1. Now, that is something that you also don't have in any of the other Sony APS-C cameras, not even in the Sony A7C. Moving forward, the next thing that strikes me is that we can see an on off button right there. It's a switch, actually. It's a, a slider a switch. And then when you look at the shutter release and what the uh, on off button or rocker used to be, most likely right there, what we have is a zoom rocker. So you're going to be able to control, like I mentioned before, the uh, zooming of that kit lens. So, you know, if the kit lens is maybe $100 more and you don't have any APC lens, you know, I think that it's going to be a good thing for you to go and buy the kit lens. Otherwise, if you don't care for kit lenses and zooming, you know, live with your lens, most likely save you $100 and get, you know, a lens. You can actually get a 16 millimeters F1.4 use for around $150 or something like that. So I recommend you do that if you don't have anything wide enough. Now let's talk about the batteries. And if we actually take a look at this image, we can actually see the grip of the camera looks pretty shallow. It looks kind of like the one from the Sony a7C, but if you also look at the volume thickness of the camera, this one is a lot thinner. So this tells me that this camera is gonna have the same little battery as, you know, almost all the APS-C cameras, you know, aside from the Sony a6600 that uses bigger battery from the full frame cameras. So we also see a custom button right there, only one, and also the move and record button at the top. Now, the other thing that we can see is that we are gonna have another 
a dial, most likely to control the aperture right here. And as you can see, we have the Hashu mount located all the way to the right. And we also have some new hooks, you know, for straps there. Um, they look pretty good there, built in in the camera. So, and we're gonna take a look at the camera from the back. And for what we can see in here, very similar to the Sony ZV-1 and even some of the other APS-C cameras, actually the A5000. But definitely we can see that we have a flip off screen right there and right now is in the uh, closed position. So it's gonna be articulated like the other, um, you know, cameras that Sony has introduced like the Sony A7C. Most likely maybe the same screen altogether. So I'm not expecting brand new menus in here. I'm not expecting touchscreen capability, especially because if that is going to be the case, most likely Sony is going to save that for a higher end APS-C camera that most likely is going to replace the Sony A6600. So this is going to wrap it up for today, guys. Let me know what other features you would like to see in this camera. Um, what do you think about the price? $900 for this camera or might as well just go with a Sony A6400 or even a Sony A6600 for $400 more. Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, guys, subscribe to this channel for more content like this one. And I will see you in the next video.